church, put your hands together. I was buried beneath my shame. Who could carry that kind of weight? It was my tomb. Sing it out. Till I met you. that's happened, we've had some devastation that's happened, we've had some lives that have been lost, 
right here in our own church family, we had a life lost. What I want to do right now is I want us to just join together and I want us to just pray as a family of believers and knowing that God has placed us here for such a time as this to lift up our friends and to lift up those in our family. And I want us right now to lift up the family, the Gellner family right now, please. Let's just lift them up right now. Just lift them up. And will you just join with me as we pray? God, God, we just love you, Father. We just love you, Father. And God, we just want to thank you for putting here, us here for such a time as this, God. To be able to be the hands and feet of Jesus to those who are in need. God, we know that you can see beyond devastation. We know that you can see beyond the things where we can't find our faith, God. But you give us the faith to know that we can keep going on. God, we're going to lift up all the families, the businesses, the churches, the people in communities that so much need you right now, God. And I pray that you would put it upon our hearts to do what it is you want us to do, to lift them when they can't lift their own arms, God. Surround them with your love, surround them with your compassion, letting them know that you will never leave or forsake them, God. And in all things, in all things, you say all things work out for good for those who love you and are called according to your purpose. God, we need to see that promise today that all things work out for good because we believe you and we trust you, God. And we love you and we thank you for saving us from all of this devastation, God. We love you and we pray it all in Jesus' name and everyone in the house said, amen. Let's just continue to pray over the next few months about that situation if you would with me, okay? Listen, as devastating as things are in the community and that happen all around, we're thankful to have a house where God is still alive and strong and where we are able, yes, where we are able to still celebrate what he's doing in our lives. I want you to take a look at with, with me at something amazing that just happened this past weekend right here at TE Church. for was for anyone who is currently serving or who wanted to serve a TE church because what we believe here is this Jesus said I came to serve not to be served and it's actually one of our four core values and we start out with serve share grow and give why because we believe that that is the hands and feet and the body of Christ is to serve and here's something I was just thinking about yesterday and I want to share it with you you know we're a house that has a lot of windows and a lot of doors and I don't want you to be that person right now, even in the house who feels like you're looking through a window, looking in. I want you to feel like you can open a door and you can step inside and you can be a part of everything that's happening right here at the church. There's no reason for you to stand behind a window. We open that door wide for everybody because we want you to be a part of what we do. So we're gonna open up that door for you. Yeah, you can clap for that. We wanna open up that door for you on Tuesday, August the 1st at 7 p.m. right here in this house where you can come and find out how you can be a part of the amazing things and the many things that we're doing right here at the church. And I promise we won't blindfold you. 
Like you, we want, we're not going to blindfold you. We're not going to make you do a three-legged race. All you have to do is come here and sit and try to find that place where you're going to fit. Plus, we have free food. Do we have food again? Okay, we got some free food too. You gotta, if nothing else, just come for the food, right? We don't care how you get through the door. Just come through. Listen, we love you guys. We're excited about this new day that we have today on Baptism Day. I want you to get ready for another amazing message by Pastor Tim. Brand new. What's up, everybody? Good to see you guys. Welcome. Glad that you're with us today. These are always some of my favorite days of the year, baptism weekends, where we celebrate people becoming brand new. So I want to get right into it today. If you have a Bible, open up to the book of Hebrews. If you don't have a Bible, make sure that you deflect the judgmental glances of those that do. <laughs> Anyhow, the book of Hebrews, there's 66 books in the Bible. This is, I think, nine from the end. So it's like, it's back there. Drill down, find the book of Hebrews. If you don't have a Bible, the text will be on the screen beside me. If you're ready and excited for the word of God today, say, I'm ready. ready. Let's do this. Make every effort to live in peace with everyone, including difficult people that don't think like you, look like you, vote like you, have nothing to do with you, just don't really like you and to be holy. It doesn't say all of that, but I really think that that's what they meant. Without holiness, no one will see the Lord. And then the author of the text says, see to it that no one falls short of the grace of God. See to it that no one falls short of the grace of God and that no bitter root grows up to cause trouble and defile many. See to it that no one falls short of the grace of God. Today, I want to talk on the subject of brand new. We love new, don't we? We love new things. We love new clothes. We love new cars. We love new shoes. Oh, man, I'm a shoe guy. I love shoes. We love new shoes. We just love anything new. And obviously, Americans love this new thing because there's been tens of millions sold the fidget spinner. Oh, we love fidget spinners. They're new, man. These are the coolest things since I was a kid when the phenomenon was pet rocks. <laughs> Some people go, wow, yeah, I had a pet rock. And those that didn't are saying, what were you smoking back in the day to have a rock and call it a pet? But now it's fidget spinners. But, but here's the issue that I have with fidget spinners. We go, oh, check it out. And then we go, oh, watch what I can do. Oh, isn't that amazing? It's not a sport, okay? It doesn't take that much to be able to do it. It's not like a gift from God. It's not like throwing a touchdown pass in the NFL. It's not like hitting a home run at PNC Park. It's a fidget spinner. It's not that big of a deal. It's called balance. Most of us learn to ride a bike. It's the same principle. But the point that I'm trying to make is we just love new things. Any Thing new, our culture enjoys, is excited about, anticipates, appreciates, and rewards new. But here's the problem we start following Jesus, we insert ourselves into the kingdom of God, we start doing God things, we start worshiping God, we start loving God, we start following Jesus, we start doing all of these things, but subconsciously, without even knowing it, we still crave something new, and here comes God with the same old story, that God so loved the world that he gave his only son that who would ever believe and trust in him would not perish, but have eternal life. Like, I heard that. I've seen it between goalposts at football games. I've seen men on corners holding up signs that say John 3, 16. I, I got that, but God, can't you do like something new? And the the challenge is God doesn't do new things just because the culture desires, appreciates, enjoys, and expects something new. So 
insert frustration here. See, I, I, I started following Jesus. My relationship with Jesus was new, but I've been doing it for a while now, and it's just kind of like the same old, same old. I've been there, and, and I've done that. God, aren't you going to do anything new? And see, this is what I believe was happening with the Hebrews. The writer was saying, you were excited about Jesus, that, that God had done something exciting in your life. You accepted, you received him, but now things aren't going as well as they once were. There's some challenges for you. There are some struggles. There's some persecution. There are some things that are happening to you that, that are making life really, really more challenging. And the writer is saying, so listen, hang in there. Don't stop. Keep on going. Jesus loves you. The promise of God that is not that there would never be problems. The promise of God is that he would be with you through the problem. And then he goes on in the text and says, see to it that no one misses, that no one falls short of the grace of God. See to it that no one misses the grace of God. Now, you have to remember that he's preaching, that he's talking, writing to church people, people that have received the gift of Jesus, people that have received the free gift of grace. But obviously this is a concern of his because he's reminding them, see to it that you don't miss it. And how, how do you miss this, this gift? Well, in Galatians 2 it says we've set aside the grace of God. In Galatians 5 it says that we've fallen from the grace of God. Again, how can you and I, people that have received grace, received Jesus, how can we set aside, fall short of the grace of God? How do we miss it? I'll tell you how. It just gets old. Been there, done that. Grace, yeah, cool. Grace, man, it's good. Grace is good. Hallelujah, I, I say that, man. I've, I've heard that phrase. Praise the Lord. Yeah, that, that's like a church prayer. I, I'm, I'm glad about what God's done in, in my life. It's good. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Oh, yeah, man, that's an old song. I, I, I got all that, but what about anything new, God? Are you going to do anything new in my life? Is there anything else that I can expect, should expect that you would do? See, I get emails. Um, there's, <laughs> there are some emails that I really like. I love some emails that just, people just say, man, I love my church, but the emails that I get a little concerned about are the ones that say, I, Pastor, I love you, but, <laughs> like I get that, and then I go, here we go, and, and I, really, I just prefer not to read them, because I'd rather feel way better about myself than I should, so I just ignore the email, but I read, because I know people, their heart is right, and they're concerned, and I have conversations with people uh, about this, and they'll say, Pastor, I, I love the church, but are you ever going to talk about anything other than just how good Jesus is. <laughs> Pastor, I, I love the church, but I, I get it. The best is yet to come. I mean, I, I get all that, but here's what I need to know. Like, can't we just get like a well-balanced diet at our church? <laughs> See, the author of the text must have been concerned about the same thing that I'm concerned about because he was trying to remind the people Really, don't forget who Jesus is and what Jesus did. Because that's like the thing that changes everything. Don't ever forget the importance of Jesus, what Jesus provides, who he really is. And, and that's a concern for me, that, that we never be a church that we go, oh yeah, cool, grace, that's good. So what I want to do in the time that we have left is I want to explain to you really in the best that I can what grace really is and to do that I have to tell you what grace really isn't and grace is not a concept or a precept or a principle but rather grace is a person and his name is Jesus and the Bible said he was filled with truth and grace and love and forgiveness that he was the word that became flesh and came and dwelt among us that this is who he is. So anytime you see the word grace in the Bible, you can kind of 
interchange that. It's synonymous with the word Jesus. Ephesians 2, 8, 9. We were saved by grace through faith, not of works that any man should boast. How about this? We were saved by Jesus through faith, not based off of anything that we've ever done, but everything that he did on our behalf. Titus says this, Titus 2, 11, I believe. God revealed his grace for the salvation of all people. How about inserting Jesus? God revealed Jesus to you and I for the salvation of not just a few, not just those that had their lives together, not just those who, who, who had everything in order, but God sent Jesus for you and I, for all people, so that we may be saved. I, I think the text that best sums it up for me that I still have a difficult time wrapping my head around is found in 2 Corinthians 5.21. It says this, God made him, Jesus, who had no sin, to be sin for us so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. Translation, God sent Jesus to take our junk, our mess, our sin, the pure and perfect lamb takes on the flaws, the sin, the stuff in our life for one reason, so you and I can be made right with God. He made him who had no sin. Grace allows you to be no longer who you were. Because every one of us in this room, at one point, we all walked through these doors. We were out here somewhere. And we walked through these doors. Someone invited us. Someone said, maybe you should try it. And we walked in this place in the middle of our addiction, in the middle of our mess after an abortion in your adultery lost lonely broken hurting confused skeptical in the middle of your mess, you walked through those doors and you heard about a God that knows you so well, but still loves you so much. And the Bible says that if anyone be in Christ, he is a new creation. The old is gone, a new life is here. And that changes everything. That changes everything because you're not who you were. So people say, wait a minute. Are we always just going to be positive in this church? Are we always just going to talk about how good God is and the grace of God and that the tomb is empty? Do we have any other option? Is there anything else that we could talk about? Jesus said, go in to the world and preach the good news to all people. Come on. Baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and Holy Spirit. And that's what we're going to do. And I want to tell you, being brand new never gets old. It never gets old. It will be. It will always be. It has always been the greatest thing of all time. You and I are not the same, not because of what we have done, but because of what Jesus has done on our behalf. If you're grateful for being new today, give him a shout in the house. Our God still takes broken things and puts them back together because our God is a redeemer. Church, just stay on your feet. We're going to worship together this moment. Seems like all I could 
God. 